Welcome to Tiny Mesh, the radio frequency uh, mesh protocol that enables the Internet of Things, providing the last mile communication between your devices and your web applications. Whether you have a requirement for controlling street light lamp posts, or you do data collection from energy meters, whether you do automatic agricultural systems or whether you have an, uh, an application within security or safety. Uh, the Tiny Mesh protocol is a self-forming and self-healing platform that enables safe data traffic without any existing infrastructure on site. The Tiny Mesh protocol is self-forming it is self-healing, which means that without having anything like Wi-Fi or wiring at the site where you want to do your remote control or monitoring, you can simply install a device with a tiny mesh radio frequency module installed and the device will automatically establish communication between itself the other devices and your gateway, providing a safe and reliable data path between your device and your application, whether that being a direct control application that connects to your gateway, or whether that being a web application that connects to the gateway through the Tiny Solution platform. Tiny Mesh is a safe communication environment where all your data is encrypted using AES-128 encryption. It is a platform specially dedicated for remote control of digital outputs, of remote data collection through digital inputs or analog inputs. You can even do pulse width modulated outputs, meaning that you can do dimming applications which might be very useful for instance in street light or any other application that requires a uh, percentage-wise output control. The um, serial data capabilities of uh, the Tiny Mesh protocol are quite unique as you have possibilities for either totally transparent serial communication between a gateway and remote devices or you can do packet protocol, meaning that you can dedicate serial data packets from a gateway to any dedicated output device. Or also from the local devices, you can stream data um, as the UART has several options for handshaking. If you do uh, packet communication, the gateway device will give you possibilities for acknowledge and non-acknowledge handshakes. If you do transparent mode communication, your preferred method might be simply to monitor the CTS or RTS handshake signals. Or if you have an ASCII protocol, an X-on, X-off functionality is available. So you have a plethora of different alternatives for safe handshaking uh, when you're doing serial data communication. The Tiny Mesh protocol is available on hardware platform that is PIN compatible and available for all international license-free communication bands. So whether your application is for product that should be exported or for your home uh, market. Uh, we have a communication frequency uh, for an ISM band that is adapted to your requirements. The protocol as mentioned earlier uh, is available both as a transparent and as a packet mode communication. This is a configurable parameter in the Tiny Mesh protocol meaning that if you're doing, for instance, a wire communication replacement, you probably already have a protocol that is in place. So by going with the transparent protocol, the, tra the tiny mesh uh, communication, 
will provide a completely transparent and uh, replacement uh, for your multi-drop communication. For instance, if you're doing RS-485, uh, the transparent mode will be a, a, trans will be a direct replacement of your wired communication. In addition to the eight programmable outputs, the Tiny Mesh module has two dedicated outputs uh, specifically intended for field deployment of the device. We have an RSI indicator that indicates the signal strength of the established communication link, link. and we have a network indicator that indicates the type of communication, type of connection that the, RSS, that the router device has established to the network. The connector connection indicator has three different flash frequencies, the fastest indicating that the router is connected directly to a gateway, the next fastest indicating that we have a router that is connected to a network and it has indeed alternative connection routes, meaning that it's seeing more than one alternative connection. And the slowest communication, uh, the slowest uh, flash frequency, indicating that yes, we do have communication, but there is no alternative established. And in the mesh network, the quality of the mesh network is to some extent dictated by the number of alternative communication paths in the network. So, in essence, the faster the network communication LED is flashing, the better communication we have established. If there is no light on the connection LED, it simply means that there is no connection. Input monitoring on TinyMesh can be uh, done through eight programmable ports. These are the same eight GPIOs that may be used for output control. So when configuring a device, you need, to you need to determine which ones to use as outputs and which ones to be used as inputs. A port that has been set up for uh, input uh, may be set as a digital input. When set as digital input, you may also select how to trigger messages if the input changes state. So for any digital input, you can select whether to generate a message on a high to low, on a low to high, or a transition from low to high and or a transition from uh, high to low. So in other words, you have all the alternative trigger capabilities available and they may be individually set for any of the digital inputs. Two of the digital inputs uh, may be set as analog, so in other words they will not be working as digital inputs but as analog inputs. When working as analog inputs uh, the analog conversion is 12 bits and the internal reference voltage for the analog conversion is 1.25 volts. So an analog input voltage must first be uh, voltage divided down to a range between 0 and 1.25 volts before applied to the analog input uh, connection. When set uh, to the analog input, um, you may also set trigger levels on the analog uh, ports. You have both a high and a low analog threshold that may be individually set. So with setting both a high and a low threshold, you have created a hysteresis, which means that when you apply the trigger information to the ports, you can set the ports to trigger messages when the analog signal is traveling from either above the high level to below the low level, or from below the low level to above the high level, or on transmission, transition in both directions.
but the distance between the high and the low level will then be working as a high stresses, meaning that you can monitor analog signals with very slow transitions. In addition to the uh, high stresses with the high and low trigger points, uh, the sampling interval for the analog input is also a programmable function. So the sampling interval may be set in steps of 100 milliseconds per sampling and always as a fixed function uh, the module will take the last received 8 samplings and create a sliding average of the last, last 8 samplings and this is the value that will be presented when you, re uh, when you request the module for the analog sampled value. So when requesting um, a sampled value, whether that being a digital or an analog signal, you may either select to set up the trigger function. The trigger function will automatically this patch uh, a message when the trigger uh, conditions are met. Alternatively, you may set up the module on timed reporting uh, of the module status. So if you set up the timed reporting function, for instance, for sending a message every five minutes or two minutes, it's acceptable in one minute state, uh, steps then in each message, in each package you're receiving from the module, uh, the package will contain information about the current status of the digital inputs, of the analog inputs, of the battery monitoring input, and of the module temperature. So every time you receive a packet, when you do the uh, automatic time-generated uh, messaging. Every packet will contain information about all the inputs. Same thing will happen if you do the triggered function. If you're triggering on any given digital input, for instance, the packet that is being delivered will contain also the status of all the other inputs.